Hello and welcome here at the Summer Breeze, and it is summer and there's no breeze right now at the moment. Uh, we're here with uh, Megadeth, uh, uh, which is really cool. Thank you guys for joining us, for, you know, being here. and You're welcome. Uh, You're sticking welcome. up in this hot tent. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's going to be great tonight, so. I think so, too. I think so, too. Um, I think it's, a, it's your second time here at the Breeze. Yeah. But how do you guys, when you do a festival tour, how do you guys, as a band, Remember festivals? Do you go like, this audience was brilliant, so they go like, no, the catering over there, that sucked really bad, we're never going back there. How, how did That's a, a little bit of both, yeah. You know, uh, when you come to a festival, you either have uh, a choice of to, you know, take uh, all the sights in and, and you know, meet people and have fun, or, or if you're not feeling good, you stay in your bus and, and hibernate, you know. Um, and then you have the other choice, which is people who are out there just for the party. Yeah. You know, they just want to go someplace and drink and, and uh, just, you know, get down. And, and um, you know, for me, I like going to the, uh, I like going to the uh, venues and, and making sure all of our stuff is ready, making sure uh, all of our crew's taken care of. Yeah. It's really easy to go around and just say, hey, man, are you okay? Uh, you know, because what happens if I go out there and the guy says, well, no, we don't have any guitar picks for you, so we're going to have to use some different ones. And I walk out there and I don't know that. And I see that and I'm like, motherfucking, what is this? <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, unless you don't care about your performance and we care so much. We want it to be the absolute best performance ever. Wherever we play at, we're always trying to outdo our last show. All right. All right. A couple of months ago, you released a, a Judas Priest cover version, yeah. Delivering the Goods, I, and I just found it, and, and and I thought like, and then there is a live recording from '90s that came out with a new uh, a cover and label, and I, I was just wondering, is that because you only, apart from the fact that the music is good, is that just to keep the streaming beast alive and and fed, or or is it is which it, part? The Judas Priest part? The, mm, yeah, pretty much everything. The live no, we were asked Priest. to do that. Okay. We were asked to do that. I, I I didn't have, you know, any any desire to record a cover song of anybody. Um, so, um, yeah, it just came as a uh, request and it came at a good time when we weren't doing anything. So that's what happened. Did you pick the song? We discussed it as a band. I remember we had a few different ones and then... We settled on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds about right. What was about to say is, uh, you know, Megadeth has covered a lot of songs during all the past decades. You know, mm -hmm. I, and it's sort. And you always, when you pick the song, and for me, when you look at it now, it almost seems a random variation of songs. There's a the, uh, police truck now from the Dead Kennedys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alice Cooper mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. How do you choose the songs you want to cover? You know, I don't have a I don't have a method that uh, I I use to. I mean, I think they've all been significant in some way to yeah. us, and as, particularly to Dave, obviously. You know, uh, either like Alice Cooper is obviously his godfather, which is you know a known fact. But like a band like Dead Kennedys, he grew up listening to me as well. So you know, I think, and for most of those bands or all of the bands that that were covered, I think you can find some connection that that's really profound personal are you guys going to be touring 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 okay uh, all the time i had you guys thought about you know um after 2024 it's obviously 2025 and there's you, you got an anniversary coming up but then yes. 2026 you got another anniversary yeah, yeah, coming. Yeah. are you thinking about that already got like you know, the five year scale gonna be like are you a sucker for anniversary shows Am I a sucker? I'm not a sucker for anything. <laughs> do you like it? <laughs> what? Do you like, would you like, or would you consider playing anniversary shows for it? Uh, yeah, we've done that. We've done that. But that, that doesn't. They're gonna come back. Yeah, that doesn't make anybody a sucker. <laughs> it's not what I meant. Yeah, it was sure. Just, just making sure. All right, yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, I actually try not to do that. But, you know, exactly what you're saying you know following trends and and trying to keep up with other people or or you know when we were back in the 90s uh, everybody was uh doing the whole seattle thing you know the grunge music and and we weren't having any part of that 
you know, we wanted to stay true to ourselves, and, and it cost us a lot. You know, we uh, ended up having a lot of uh, radio stations that were supporting us during that time stop supporting us because they never really supported us in the first place. They were just doing what was popular, and, yeah. and we were really popular in the States in 1992 because of Countdown to Extinction. shit. But, um, you know, I, I think... Uh, after Countdown came out, we started to pull away from the normal metal ranks and started to become a band that doesn't really need a, a description. Mm. You know, uh, it's a, that's a, a blessing when your band gets to the point where you don't have to have someone say, oh, they're a heavy metal band. Because, you know, we're not really a heavy metal band. We're more of a thrash band band we're more kind of like a speed metal band too so you really want to get down to it we have punk rock and classical and jazz influences too so i mean who's gonna sit around and listen to you describe a band that has you know 15 adjectives to <laughs> or adverbs to tell you what the fucking band is you know <laughs> you know maybe that this uh maybe that it's cult and everybody knows who you guys are but it's the past eventually and sometimes kind of let you go and because it does always you know the drawings to your origins and it always comes back up you know one more sometimes more sometimes less do you uh, first of all aren't you sick and tired of it because you're mega uh, and b is this ever gonna get to an end I'm not sure I understand all the part in life, you know, you know, you be hailing from, from the Metallica and then, you know, for me, oh, it always comes back in the heavy metal history. Yeah. Uh, every couple of years, you know, and then you have to topic again and then you have to like say something about this. Aren't you yeah. getting sick of that or are you? Uh, well, I don't really talk about my time with Metallica. Um, I don't bring it up. So yeah. if someone brings it up, I'll answer the question, but I usually don't, don't bother doing that because I think in a way that kind of gives the impression that I need to talk about them in order for me to feel good about myself yeah. and I don't I, I you know I I don't you know I feel good about who I am just because I feel good about who I am it has nothing to do with bands that I've played in in the past you know and if it was uh, I would say of the three bands that I was in that um you know i i enjoyed panic and megadeth uh more than i did metallica because we we uh we we did argue a lot um and i i loved playing with those guys but uh it was it was meant for a season and and um you know i uh I look back on that time with a, a lot of fondness. I, I used to not because I was still hurt from losing my job. But now I know, um, you know, uh, basically uh, things happen for a reason, no matter what they are. And whether I was still in that group or not, um, that was out of my hands. And once I accept those things, you know, acceptance is the key to all of my problems today. Mm. You know, if there's something happening in my life and, and I can't change it, and I spend my time wasting energy and effort to try and change something I cannot change, man, you're going to go nuts. You That's know? True. So I've, I've, chosen to find the happier things in life. We were at a meet and greet uh, just a couple of days ago, and, and this little kid, it was the most beautiful little kid, this little boy comes up there, and um, he had a Megadeth shirt on, and, and, and I said something over to my, uh, one of my crew, and he gave me a guitar pick, so I had my hand like this, I said, give me your hand, so he gives me his hand, and I cover his hand, and I, and I said, look inside here, and he saw my pick, and his eyes kind of went like this, right? And what happened next was absolutely beautiful. I said, don't give this to anybody. This is yours. You know what he did? He reached in his pocket and he took out a lollipop that he had. And he gave that to me. He only had two. And he gave me one of his, his pieces of candy. 
it was the most awesome loving gesture and he was just so little and that says so much about his dad yeah who was there with them about how they raised him uh, you know and it, i i was happy the rest of the day just i i was isn't just so happy you've achieved pretty much everything you've done everything you've seen it all mm -hmm. what is there left for you where's where's what's a, one more goal for negative where you go like that's something i kind of wanted what's you still haven't done yet well there's a lot of stuff we haven't done yet And um, now that we're we're getting uh, closer as a family, and and uh, all of our significant others, you know, the wives and 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 the family members are all getting closer. Um, there's more cool opportunities for us to do things. Like yeah. we're going down to South America again next year, and I was just talking to James, and I said, you know, I. Uh, I wanted to head out to Easter Island. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a long journey from Chile to get out to Easter Island, yeah. but I want to go see those statues, yes. you know, right? Cool, eh? Yeah. And, and um, I said the other thing I wanted to do was Machu Picchu. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. But it's, it's really high, and I'd have to be in, in optimum health in order to make that journey. So stuff like that is stuff we'd like to do. Um, most people think, uh, is there anything else you'd like to do that it would be a musical goal? Yeah. And it's not really a musical goal. It's something that's a personal goal that's just another indication of why we feel so close to our fans because we dream about things that they dream about. You know, we have, we have wants and needs like they do. And we're not that different. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of our fans would love to go to Easter Island or to some of the other places we've done, going into the catacombs in Paris underground and seeing those millions of bones. It's really unsettling, but it's cool too. <laughs> That's nice. We are pretty much at the end of everything. Uh, there's only one more question left. And, uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're all not getting any younger. Does it? Obviously, maybe it takes more more effort, but uh, do you feel that it takes more power being on stage, more energy for you? Uh, it, does it take more energy to care? You know, your play is flawless still. You couldn't hear a single mistake when you guys are hot. But, but for you guys, is it getting harder? Guys? And can I get, like, you know what, it's tough in doing a tour and as long as this one mm -hmm. and going back, is it more exhausting? It is difficult. You're absolutely right. And uh, I, I think that um, the way that you framed that question was, was very kind. Thank you for that. Because uh, you, you didn't say, you know, you're old and you can't play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't about to hint at that at all. Yeah, so no, 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 no. You know, you, you, just, you just have to take care of yourself. You know, if you, uh, if you don't, treat your body like it's a trash can um it's gonna it's gonna be there when you need it and uh what we're doing some sometimes you get sick i have uh i i got bronchitis a few days ago so i'm dealing with the end part of having bronchitis i'm not contagious so don't worry All right. but um you know i i uh, had a couple rough days singing and mm -hmm. i you know i i The show must go on. So I went out there and, and sang. Tried my best. You know, I, I know that there were a couple squeaks and a couple notes that I didn't make. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a festival. And I think the fans uh, know that uh, me, I'm not going to cancel a show just because, you know, I, I have a, a small... Uh, Thing going on with my my voice or my lungs because you know, first off it's metal and we've never um, <clears throat> people in metal don't um, concern themselves with having um, you know a pristine voice so much as they do the whole package heaviness loudness fastness uh, important lyrics great soloing and drumming um, it's 
actually kind of hard to find a really uh, uh, successful metal band that's got a, a real singer in it. You know, when mm -hmm. I think when I think of that, I think of like Queensrÿche. Mm -hmm. Jeff was a really great singer. I think of Judas Priest. Rob's a really great singer. <coughs> <laughs> but there's not really a lot of singer singers and uh that's one of the things i miss um about listening to music um new music there's not a lot of singing going on and i i, I personally prefer that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i can see that yeah. but it's very hard nowadays because i don't even know when you're listening to new music who did who did it yeah I mean, can't, can't tell anyone. yeah it's just yeah and i'm not even a pro so i you know i'm like oh well oh One final question. Sure. Is there an end to Megadeth? I don't think so. I mean, eventually there'll be, uh, you know, a period at the end of the sentence. But for right now, we're all enjoying ourselves and we're we're healthy. And and I, I feel like, I mean, honestly, if I was to be put on the spot, I, I, I could say I feel like we've got probably two more records in us mm -hmm. uh, at least. And um, that's not... That's not including all the great songwriting that Dirk started contributing. You know, Kiko did a little bit the first record that he was on, Stope, yep. And Dirk came in and he did some songwriting on The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. So even if I did start to get tired with my songwriting or my ideas, I know that these guys have uh, got enough time and experience in the band now that they understand where I come from with my writing and we could... Uh, contribute on stuff sometimes songwriters they may just need a little little pat on the butt to get them going you know <laughs> so um i'm not gonna say I, i want james or dirt to pat my butt but <laughs> <laughs> i was getting ready here uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah we we don't really think that there's a need for there to be an end you know if the band starts to suffer And we don't play good anymore. Our songs aren't popular anymore. Yeah, I imagine we'll probably say it's time to uh, to call it an end. Um, I don't see that happening today. Um, I don't see that happening even in the near future. Um, but I think when when that time does come, we'll we'll know. Mm. We'll know. So thank you for your time. This has been a fun interview. No, thank you. Sorry for the sucker. It wasn't meant in offensive in any way. Yeah, it's so. okay. It was, make, it was making me horny. I heard, I heard it on the <laughs> No, I heard that expression somewhere on American TV. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you a sucker for? I'm like, I might want to use that now. <laughs> Which was, no, okay, but. Uh, no, uh, it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs>